Long before the first video game was ever created, the main pastime for children all over the world was playing with physical toys. Letting their imagination run wild as they rammed tiny people into each other on the bedroom floor and making their own sound effects with their mouth. And few toys are more successful or recognizable than LEGO. This highly sophisticated interlocking brick system has been an international phenomenon for decades, spawning several movies, TV shows, reality shows, board games, and of course, video games. The LEGO Star Wars games by Traveler's Tales in particular have been among the best-selling and best-reviewed games of all time. And the many games that followed suit did pretty well too. And with the imminent release of LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, I think it's high time we got a LEGO minifigure as a fighter in the Super Smash Bros. series. I realise it's the last thing anyone expects, but nobody expected Steve to get in either. Of course, we do have to address the elephant in the room. Smash is a celebration of gaming history, and every single character so far has been from a video game. There are a lot of fan-made rules about character inclusion that have been broken and disproven over the years, but this is one that Sakurai has been pretty adamant about. If we start letting manga and anime characters into Smash, that might diminish the significance of future characters. But almost every single LEGO game that TT made has been a licensed IP from a movie franchise, meaning almost the entire series is illegal for Smash. So as fun as it would be to hear the LEGO Yoda death sound on Mishima Dojo while Marth tells you to keep your eyes open, I'm aiming for something a bit more realistic. But luckily, there's one LEGO game that isn't based on a film. Mind if I park here? 2013's LEGO City Undercover, otherwise known as Grand Theft Auto Family Edition, might be rooted in a particular brand of LEGO kits, but all the locations, story elements, and more importantly characters, were created specifically for the game. Chase McCain is TT's OC and is therefore perfectly legal for Smash. On top of that, the game had a really strong Nintendo history. Not only did it have Wii U exclusivity and a prequel on the 3DS, but it was also co-published by Nintendo themselves. Sure, the 2017 remake kind of ruins that, but Smash has never let a silly thing like rival platforms get in the way. So let's take a look at Chase McCain and see what this plastic policeman can bring to Smash. Now, before I discuss Chase's special moves, I need to explain his unique character gimmick. Every time Chase lands a hit with one of his A moves, it will cause LEGO bricks to spill out of the target, like the coin battles from previous Smash games. Anyone can collect these bricks, but they're only useful in Chase's hands. There will be a dedicated icon showing how many bricks Chase has next to his percentage. Chase begins the match with 20 bricks, can hold a maximum of 100, and resets to 0 after getting KO'd. As for their function, they're used as currency for Chase's special moves. Like Hero's MP gauge, but without the self-regeneration. For his neutral special, Chase uses the bricks to build something. I mean, come on, it's LEGO, what else are you gonna do? There are four different objects he can build, and he always chooses the most expensive option available. For one brick, he just spawns a 1x1 one one brick. It's a simple throwable item that deals minor damage, like the wood from Villager's Tree. For six bricks, he instead builds a launch pad, which rests on the ground until someone steps on it, launching them high into the air. For 25 bricks, he builds a police car, which zooms forward until it hits an opponent, launching them forward before breaking apart. And for a whopping 60 bricks, Chase will summon the mighty Tyrannosaurus Rex, which makes a deafening roar that stuns all opponents as if they were hit with a Deku Nut. Only one of Chase's creations can be present at a time, and they all vanish after a few seconds. Also, if Chase takes damage during the building animation, which gets longer the more bricks he uses, the build will be cancelled, but the bricks will still be spent. Kirby would either gain a Chase McCain wig, or he could turn into LEGO himself, similar to Minecraft Kirby. Kirby can also collect bricks even while he hasn't copied Chase, but he can't produce them himself. For his side special, he wields a gun. A grapple gun, that is. This is the only special move that doesn't require bricks to execute. Simply tap B to fire a grappling hook into the distance, tripping the first player it hits. 
This can obviously be reflected and pocketed. However, if you hold B instead of tapping it, the line will stay fixed to the gun and can't be reflected. This version won't do any damage, but it will pull opponents towards Chase. Although, unlike other fishing moves in Smash, it won't transition into a throw. Oh, and you can also use it as a tether recovery. Speaking of recovery, that's something else he needs. Chase's up special has him build a staircase out of Lego and climb up it before leaping off. Each step costs 5 bricks to make, and there can be up to 6 steps or 30 bricks total. Chase won't be left helpless after using the move, but he still has to land before repeating it. The LEGO staircase can be used as a platform by other players, but they only have a very short window to do so. Once Chase jumps off, the entire thing drops down like an anvil. Chase's down special is a tool that every policeman needs... Dynamite! This is a tool that Chase can normally only use while wearing his Miner disguise, but the custom character creator lets Miners look like cops, so I think we're good. Chase spawns dynamite in his hand like Young League's bombs, but it won't explode on impact, only after 3 seconds or on contact with fire, like Snake and Banjo's grenades. The dynamite costs 15 bricks to spawn, and only one can exist at a time. Now for Chase's normal moves. While Chase does know the ancient martial art of Kung Fu and plumbing, I don't think he would exclusively be a brawler. LEGO is all about creativity, so I think we can get creative with this moveset. And that's why Chase McCain would have two separate jabs. If you simply tap A repeatedly, he'll do a three swing combo with the pickaxe from the aforementioned Miner costume. This combo will deal a lot of damage and the final hit can even spike, but each hit takes a while to complete. If you hold A instead, Chase will start punching rapidly. This doesn't have as much strength or reach as the pickaxe, but it has much more spam potential and is far less punishable. Chase's dash attack would have him tackle his opponent to the ground like a football player. Or, as we Aussies call it, a football player. Chase's forward tilt uses the hammer from his construction worker disguise, swinging it in a short arc in front of him. It has pretty short reach, but it has high priority over other moves. The up tilt uses the fire axe from his firefighter disguise. It swings forward above his waist and has a sweet spot against aerial foes. The down tilt is a simple sweeping kick that Chase sometimes does during combat. It's good for starting combos. For the forward smash attack, a Lego door appears in front of Chase, which he tries to pry open with the crowbar from his robber disguise. Once the smash is released, the door flings open, sending his opponent at a nasty horizontal angle. The up smash has him pull out his astronaut jetpack, with the exhaust pointing upwards to burn the opponent. The down smash has him pull out a pneumatic drill. This one doesn't have any launch power, but it does bury nearby foes. Chase can even move horizontally while the move is active. The more Chase charges the smash, the longer the drill will run. For his neutral air, Chase does his best Crash Bandicoot impression with a spin attack. This move is very similar to Mario's down air, multi-hit on all sides. The forward air has him whip out a stethoscope before whipping with the stethoscope. For the back air, Chase shows off his inner Ninevite and slaps you with a fish. The up air has him pull out the chicken from his farmer outfit, pecking upwards while stalling his descent. The down air uses the color gun from his robber kit, firing diagonally downwards for strong knockback. Also, as a purely aesthetic touch, the opponent would turn to Chase's player colour for a few seconds. I could see this being especially chaotic with multiple players using the same character. Chase's grab uses his actual grab animation from LEGO City Undercover, while his pummel has him stomp on the opponent's toes. Actually, do minifigs even have toes? Anyway, the forward throw has Chase spin and then toss his foe in front of him. But let's not make any jokes about so long get X Fury! For the back throw, Chase leaps around his opponent before giving a donkey kick from behind. His up throw has him spin the foe on his feet before kicking them upwards. And the down throw has him jump up with the opponent before smacking them in the chest, resulting in a diagonal spike. And now it's time for the final smash, Super Build. Chase slams down a Lego base plate in front of him. If at least one player is hit, Chase will then build a replica of the LEGO City Police Station while constantly dealing damage. Once the build is complete, it explodes, launching anyone inside. 
This is very similar to Villager and Isabelle's final smashes, but unlike those, the move doesn't simply end with the explosion. LEGO Debris will also fly everywhere, which can hurt players that weren't caught in the final smash itself. This move also uses up Chase's entire brick supply, but gets bigger the more he has. Super builds were introduced in LEGO City Undercover, and let's be honest, the only thing more fun than building LEGO is tearing it down again. Now for some cosmetic touches. For his up taunt, Chase turns towards the camera and strikes a heroic pose. For his side taunt, he pulls off his head and one leg and starts juggling them. Down taunt has him hold up his badge and blow his whistle. Also, whenever Chase gets KO'd, he should fall apart like LEGO characters do when they die. For alternate costumes, the original game already has the entire set to pull from. The default appearance would be his police uniform, but it should specifically be the original Wii U incarnation. The light blue pops a lot more than the remake's navy. You can also have his robber, miner, astronaut, farmer, fireman, and construction outfits. The civilian outfit could work, but it serves no gameplay purpose other than removing all abilities, so we'll instead go with Chase's plain clothes disguise. Of course, we need a LEGO stage as well, and what better location than LEGO City itself? Perhaps the fighters could be given a police escort around the various landmarks of the game. Or, for the hardened criminals, we could have a prison riot on Albatross Island. Maybe we could even get Rex Fury as a boss! Who knows? Now obviously Smash Ultimate is already over and done with, and the next game is an entire generation away, if ever. But that doesn't make speculations like this any less fun to try. Chase McCain would definitely be a fun character to include, which is really what LEGO is about above all else. Fun. Now if you'll excuse me, I need to get back to playing LEGO City Undercover for a challenge run.